Are you ready for 2022? Okay, maybe we're not ready, but design is. So let's dive in to what the design trends for 2022 are gonna be looking like. All right, guys, let's get into it. So what I'm loving about looking forward at the 2022, 2022, oh my gosh, it's like a tongue twister. What I'm loving about diving into 2022 design trends is that there is this whole movement around a lot more items that have like natural flaws to it and just embracing it, becoming more of you, like expressing it as a unique piece within your home instead of trying to, you know, curate and tailor everything to be so pristine and perfect. And I am really loving that. Don't get me wrong. There are definitely some like, that look is always gonna be here, people who prefer more of a clean, minimalist vibe. But what I'm loving now is that we are definitely seeing a bit of a transition time where we're really starting to move away from very curated looks. So without further ado, let's dive into the perfectly imperfect design trends of 2022. Starting with vintage. Yes, vintage is making a comeback. I feel like we've been seeing this with a few, you know, different things. On my channel, I've talked about Grand Millennial and maximalism, and you know, even Boho has that touch of that like very eclectic vibe to it. And that vintage is kind of at the base of a lot of that, and that is really, really coming back. Full blown style, bring in the vintage pieces. So vintage pieces tie in with the sustainability story. Sustainability is still a trend, of course. It's not even a trend. I hate calling sustainability a trend. Let me correct that. But it's still something we're embracing in design. Trends is really moving towards that biophilic and sustainable um, avenues decor style and vintage fits in with this because we are reclaiming used pieces into our space. It really depends on the antique shop that they go to and you know the type of vendors that they have but if you're a pretty savvy consumer you'll probably find really good quality pieces at your local antique shop. And you don't just have to go to antique stores, think um, flea markets, think even garage sales are actually, I got a really great piece at a garage sale, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's stunning. And I just refinished it and looks like, not brand new, it still has that like vintage quality. It just was ugly red, so I had to refinish it, but vintage finds are the best. I have lots. And what's great is you can either keep them looking the way that they look if you love it, or you can like refinish them or repurpose them, which is also super sustainable. But vintage, hot, love it, all over that. The next design trend that we're looking at, which is not new, but still on trend, which is natural and neutral shades. I feel like we've been seeing a lot of this. It's funny, we have this like eclectic vibe, but we also have this like neutral vibe. And it's definitely, I don't know, sometimes they cross paths. There's just a lot of hand movements here. <laughs> but basically they never do go out of style when it comes to natural neutral tones. They are always in style, but you're definitely gonna see more of it. And I feel like it comes to this whole sustainability where it's, we're talking about natural and neutral materials, right? Natural and neutral materials? Natural materials. So like jute rugs, linens, cottons, uh, wools, like all of those things are natural materials which are naturally in a more neutral color palette. So I feel like that's why we're really seeing this, you know, continue to be fully embraced. From the color palette, we're still really embracing much more neutral and natural tones. So like we're getting away from like the grays. I know I've got a gray wall behind me, but we're getting away from those gray cooler tones and we're really moving into more of like the vanillas and the creams and the those rich browns. And like, there's like this beautiful like orange, rustic orangey, I don't wanna say orange, but it's like, um, I don't even know the color. What's the color? What's the color? It's not coming to me. I can see it. I'll just show you. But there's like that whole thing, right? Like it's like those warm greens and browns and rusty oranges. We're gonna call it rusty oranges. <laughs> and I do feel like a lot of this natural um, environment, natural tones and warmer palette comes from being at home a lot more. You know, when you spend a lot of time in your home, you really want it to have more of a peaceful vibe. So I think that's why we're really seeing the trends shift 
to a lot more of these um, warmer earth tones and more calming natural elements. On the flip side, there's still color that we're gonna see in 2022, cause not everybody's into natural neutral tones. And you're gonna be like blown away, but we're hearing and seeing greens and pinks making a comeback. But like, we've been seeing green, but this is like a little bit different, almost like that tealy green and almost like that soft pastel pink, which is, I mean, it gives me 80s vibes a little bit, but it's like the modern version of it. But even still, it's coming 2022. You're going to see a lot more of this. So think like a deeper jewel toned greens and then like a terracotta pink. That's the color, not pastel, terracotta pink. Just a quick pause here. If you're enjoying this content, please hit that thumbs up button. I greatly appreciate it. And it does help me out. Let me know you're enjoying the video as well as you know the algorithm and all that jazz. All right, let's jump back into it. All right, I briefly touched on this, but it's not going anywhere. I have a whole video on it if you do want to deep dive into it, but that is biophilic design. Biophilic is just a fancy word for saying using plants. <laughs> I feel like... I mean, it sounds awesome to say biophilia and like you can speak very, you know, when you're speaking to people being like, you can use the term biophilia, it's a great word, but it really is just using plants. And it's not just have to be real plants. Biophilia does embrace um, not just real plants, but also plant motifs. So if you did a wallpaper with like a, you know, plant pattern on it, uh, even fake plants, I hate fake plants, I've done a few videos where I talk about how my dislike for fake plants. That being said, even that is good for you. So biophilic design, still super hot for 2022. All right, going into 2022, the love of curved furniture is not going away. I did a whole video about curves because I feel like at the beginning of this year, I wasn't 100% sold at it, but now we've got a whole year and it's just getting hotter and hotter and hotter and going into 2022, there will be even more curved furniture. And I'm, you know what? I'm loving it. I'm loving the curves. I'm loving the way we're using curves. I'm loving the, there's so many different things that people are doing, you know, even with the kitchen islands and just, there's a lot of beautiful designs. I'm loving if you're doing like a huge renovation or something like arched doorways or like a built-in, like a bookcase built-in with a curve detail. Oh, I love it. But curved furniture in general, curved pieces in general, sideboards, all of that, super hot, still super hot going into 2022. So 2022, we are still talking about sustainability. Again, I hate that it keeps ending up on trend lists because sustainability should not be a trend. That being said, I don't care how you embrace it. Being more sustainable and trying to be more conscious of where our products and materials come from is always important. So it is still very trendy to be sustainable and to be green. So you can think of not just you know, say the vintage furniture, reclaimed items and all that kind of stuff using maybe a reclaimed floor and using materials like cork that are renewable, but also even thinking about like your lighting consumption and really embracing using technology to help you with your consumption and all that kind of stuff. So there's a whole bunch of things that, you know, go around sustainability that we can help, you know, reduce our carbon footprint. And that's really what we're talking about here. So anything within the decor world that you can get that's ethically sourced, sustainable, uh, renewable resources, things that, you know, lower our carbon footprint, like how we're using lighting through technology, you know, there's great apps and stuff. There's all these different types of products in the sustainable mindset that's super hot, I hate to say that, but it's still super hot, still super conscious. I don't think it's ever gonna not be conscious. We don't live in a world where we have that luxury anymore, let's be honest. So still being sustainable, still being conscious. If I have to talk about this as a trend every year, fine. So be it, just embrace it. <laughs> it's my PSA for the day. Okay, I feel like this one completely contradicts what I just said, but you can still have beautiful, elegant, and luxurious fabrics and be sustainable. And that is, very, very hot for 2022. Now, I feel like we've been seeing a lot of the natural neutral, which is still super on trend, um, but that crisp white linen, like it'll never go anywhere, don't get me wrong. It's always great. Um, that's like a, you know, there's a reason why hotels do it because you can bleach it anyway. Side note, that's not going anywhere. However, we are really bringing in a lot more warmer 
um, tones. You know, seeing like the throw blankets and that layering and bringing in different textiles and like more of deeper, richer color palettes. That's all what we're seeing again coming back into fashion for 2022. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if with this embrace of more rich textures is it also touches with that vintage. So like, let's say you have, you know, a knitted uh, throw that, you know, was made by somebody in your family that's been around for a really long time. It's embracing that and bringing that back to the forefront, putting it out, enjoying it, the history of it, the story behind it. I think you're going to see a lot more of that in 2022. So another thing that we are seeing, we've been seeing this for the whole year. However, going into 2022, we're going to jump even further into this and that is multifunctional spaces, right? We now use our homes very differently for the most part than we did, or, you know, maybe we, you know, had to and don't have to anymore, but we still like having those zones and that's here to stay. And why there's the discussion around this being here to stay, even though hopefully going into 2022, we are much more in a normalized world, where I'm going to say, where we're not spending necessarily as much time at home. We're still embracing our home being this safe haven. So it might not be as much embracing that workspace that we really had to kind of jump into last year, you know, whether we wanted to or not. Um, this year it's about creating zones of peace and relaxation and actually having the space be somewhere that you come to rest and relax in and actually enjoy your home much more. We have been in a place where we've had to live in our spaces, you know, a lot more than we had probably ever thought we would. And now it's jumping into, um, how do we make it the most efficient, utilizing our space to the best of its ability, having furniture that serves multiple functions. Maybe you have like a small wet bedroom, but you'd like to have people, you know, come over family, friends, whatever. So you buy a sectional that has a pullout coach. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of multifunctional things. Basically looking at our space, and making sure that we're able to utilize it in the most efficient way possible and not have wasted space and just be able to really embrace furniture and pieces that can serve us multiple functions. That is here to stay. One of the interesting design trends that we are starting to see is this blurred lines between your indoor and outdoor space. They're calling it entangled design. Now, what this is, is embracing that use of outdoor space as a part of our living space. And I feel like, yes, we've done that always. Like, you know, you have your, if you have a balcony or you have a yard or, you, or your little piece of land to your name, if you do, I mean, not everybody does have that luxury, but if you do have that luxury, it's really embracing it as a true addition to your home. So what we're seeing with this um, embracing of that natural space as well is that we're trying to have it almost more natural instead of like just hardscaping everything and having it so pristine. So having more uh, organic edges, more like the boulders and the rocks and like more of a natural, truly natural element. I recently watched a YouTube video, sorry, side note, but this thing was amazing. And they're called natural pools. now. They are expensive, not in my budget, but basically it looks like a pond and it has all natural edges and it like, it just looks like a pond and it has a waterfall. The waterfall is very important. It's like a little kind of like babbling brook type of waterfall because it circulates the water that way, which is really intentional. But basically it is a, a swimming pond and it's designed that way, but it looks like it was always there. It looks extremely natural. And my question was, because I'm in Canada, can you skate on it in the winter? Cause like I'd be all over that if I could afford one. Now they are extremely expensive because they do bring in the earth and they have the moss and like they do all this stuff to make it look super natural, but super side note. When I was reading about this entangled design, what is it called? Yeah. Entangled design. Um, that was the first thing that came to mind because I saw that and went, Oh my God, I would love that because it doesn't have to function as a pool. It doesn't look like your typical pool scape, which I don't love a pool. I just personal opinion. It's a lot of work for three months a year <laughs> where I live. <laughs> if we lived in Florida, it'd be a totally different story, but I don't live in Florida, so it's not worth it. It's literally snowing right now. Um, that being said, 
this I would be all over because it doesn't feel like you would have to use it as a pool because it's really not a pool. So that was my super side tangent that I just wanted to share with you guys because as soon as I read about this, I'm like, I see this happening. It's becoming more of a thing. People are spending more money on their homes if they're able to, if it's a, it's a luxury. I know that it's a, it is definitely a luxury, but this natural pool pond looking thing, amazing. I will link the channel if I can find it. I will link that channel below because it was so cool. Okay, let's get back to the 2022 list, shall we? If you have watched my channel, you have seen that I do design styles and there's one design style I have not covered. Not because I haven't heard of it, because I just, I don't know. There's something about it. I just haven't gotten into it yet. <laughs> I don't know why. And it is the Japandi design style. I don't know what it is about it. I just haven't like, it's a weird combo. It's a Scandi Scandinavian Japanese mix for interior design. And I don't talk about design styles that I personally love. I didn't actually think this one would blow up as much as it did. So shame on me because this style is hot for 2022. Which is interesting because it's definitely a minimalist vibe, which is probably why I wasn't vibing with it because hello, I'm a maximalist, we've talked about this. So those natural elements that we talked about, super hot, goes with the Japandi look. Muted palette, um, natural light, plants, clean, simple lines. It's all of the stuff that we're talking about, but it definitely has a very distinctive look. So. Yes, the Japandi style is hot for 2022. It's gonna to continue to be hot and I'm, I'm embracing it. Maybe I will do a whole design style video on it and I will deep dive into it because I can't talk about it much here because I haven't deep dived into it yet. And maybe once I deep dive, which almost every single time happens, I have a new appreciation for it. So it's in style. <laughs> this hot take for 2022, I am all over it. I don't know what's happened to myself, but I have always been into crafting and DIY, always, ever since I was a little girl, trust me, like honestly, it's, it, 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 all of my pennies that I got for allowance was used on DIY and crafting and stuff. I just, I've always really enjoyed it. So this is nothing new to me, but I've had this real strong urge lately to do more DIY and that, I'm like, I don't know where it came from. I guess I am more influenced by trends than I realize even as a designer because that is on the 2022 list. Yes, DIY creations as accents in your home. So really embracing um, doing your own thing. So the one that comes to mind right away is macrame. I feel like that's something a lot of people have learned how to do and embrace and it's got that really cool boho, eclectic, maximalist vibe to it. Like I don't know why, but it just does. But it also goes with like mid-century modern and you can use it in more of like a minimalist space and have it as like a cool, you know, wall hanging. There's like a million ways. I don't know why I'm just like, I'm loving macrame lately and you're seeing it everywhere. I mean, it's at home sense for goodness sakes. It's everywhere. I think a lot of this trends come out of people having been at home more and you know, having more time to explore some of their hobbies and interests and pursuing things that just bring happiness, not for any other reason necessarily, not as a side hustle, not as anything, just as like happiness and joy. And there's something about creating a piece, anything, whether it's a piece of artwork, a piece of jewelry, a, you know, a wall hanging, anything that you to create yourself that does bring a lot of joy just in the act of doing it. And I think that's why we're seeing this become such a big trend coming into 2022 is because we're embracing this more natural, homeopathic, um, embracing ourselves, self-reflection. There's like a whole psychological theory behind this. And I mean, when you actually really look into design, that is a big part of it is like what we go through overall really does impact, you know, fashion and interior design and our architectural styles. Like there's always in every era and every, every movement that we see throughout history it does really reflect what's happening in the world, which is what I love about interior design is it's really all encompassing and you can kind of see what was, you know, what was going on in society at the time. 
And I mean, that's like getting in deep, <laughs> but that is the truth and it's, you see it everywhere. So yes, this DIY style really coming back for 2022 and I'm all over it. So yeah, I've got like little here. I'll just, I, I did my, I did my Christmas things. I put them here. I mean, they're out for the world to see. <laughs> Not that the world comes to my house, but yeah, I mean, you know. Overall, what I'm loving about 2022 for interior design is that it's all about being authentic. It's about expressing yourself. It's about showcasing your own personal history or your journey, your travels, and embracing it through a whole host of different design styles and looks, whether it's clean and minimalist or more eclectic and, you know, um, maximalist, I'm gonna call it. But it doesn't matter where you land on that spectrum, the overall feeling is just to be more authentic and to embrace some of the imperfections instead of being perfect and like tailored and have this Instagram worthy um, interior decor. And that's what I am loving about going into 2022 is that we're really just embracing a lot more of a natural vibe. If you enjoyed this video, definitely jump over to my design style video series. There's a whole bunch of different styles. I'm sure you'll find some that you enjoy in there. All right, guys, until next time, bye.